So, Eric, I've uh, talked to your son, Zev, who's an incredible human being, but let me uh, ask you, this might be difficult because you're both sitting together. What advice do you have for him as he makes his way in this world, especially given that, as we mentioned before on Joe Rogan, you're flawed in that just like all humans, you're mortal. Well, at some level, I guess one of my issues is that I've got to stop giving quite so much advice. Uh, early on, I was very worried that I could see Zev's abilities and I could see his uh, challenges and I saw them in terms of myself. So a certain amount of Zev rhymes with whatever I went through as a kid. And I don't want to doom him to the same outcomes that that sufficed for me. I think that he's got a much better head on his shoulders at age 15. He's much better adjusted. And in part, it's important for me to recognize that because I think I did a, a reasonably decent job early on, I don't need to get this part right. And, you know, I, I'm looking at, at Zev's trajectory and saying, you're going to need to be incredibly and even pathologically self-confident. The antidote for that is going to be something you're going to need to carry on board, which is radical humility. Um, and you're going to have to have those in a dialectical tension, which is never resolved, which is a huge burden. You are going to have to forgive people who do not appreciate your gifts because your gifts are clearly evident. And many people will have to pretend not to see them because if they see your gifts, then they're gonna to have to question their entire approach to education or employment or critical thinking. And what my hope is, is that you can just forgive those who don't see them and who complicate and frustrate your life and realize that you're gonna to have to take care of them too. Sav, let me ask you the more challenging question because the guy sitting right here, what advice do you have for your dad? Since uh, after talking to you, I realize you're the, uh, the more brilliant aside from the the better looking uh, member of the family? Um, <laughs> it's a bit of an odd, <laughs> an odd question. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> Sorry. You can say anything you want. This is the last time we're going to be seeing Lex. <laughs> <laughs> this could um, be an awkward drive home. <laughs> I think sort of a new perspective I've taken on parenting is that it is a task for which no human is really supposed to be prepared. You know, there are, uh, you know, in Jewish tradition, for example, there are uh, myriad analogies in the Torah and the Talmud that compare um, the role of a parent to the role of a god, right? And no human is prepared to play god and create and guide a life, but somehow we're, we're forced into it as, as people. Um, and I think sometimes it's hard for... Uh, children to understand that however their their parents are failing um <laughs> sort <laughs> of has to be here. <laughs> <laughs> is is something for for which we must budget because our parents play a role in our lives uh of which they're they're not worthy and they devote themselves to uh regardless because that becomes who they are in a certain sense so i hope to um I hope to have realistic realistic expectations of you as a human because I think too often it, it, it's easy to have godly expectations of people who are far from such a role. And I think I'm really happy that you've been as open as you have with me about the fact that, um, you know, you really, you don't pretend to be a god in my life. You... You are a guide who allows me to see myself, and that's been very important considering the fact that uh, by your self-teaching paradigm, um, I will have to I will have to guide myself, and being able to see it and see myself accurately has been one of the greatest gifts that you you've given me. So I'm very appreciative, and uh, I want you to know that. I don't buy into the the role that you're you're supposed to um, sort of 
sort of fake your way through uh, in my in my life, but I am unbelievably happy with uh, a more realistic connection that we've been able to build in, in lieu of it. So I think it's been easier on you actually as you come to realize what I don't know, what I can't do, and that there's been a period of time I guess that's fascinating to me where. Um, you're sort of surprised that I don't know the answer to a certain thing as well as you do. And that I remember going through this with a particular mathematician who I held, and I still hold in awe, named David Kajdan. And, you know, he famously said to, and weirdly our family knew his family in the Soviet Union, but um, he said, you know, Eric, I always appreciate you coming to my office because uh, I always find what you have to say interesting, but you have to realize that in the areas that you're talking about, you are no longer the student, you are actually my teacher. And I wasn't prepared to hear that. And there are many ways in which, as I was just saying with the Mozart, I am learning at an incredible rate from you. Um, I used to learn from you because I didn't understand what was possible. You were, you, you were very much, I mean, this is the weird thing. There used to be this thing called Harvey, the invisible rabbit. This guy could, had a okay. rabbit that was like six feet tall that only he could see maybe yeah, was talking. Yeah. And that was like you at age four. Is You were saying batshit crazy things that were all totally sensible and it, nobody else could put them together. And so what's wonderful is, is that the world hasn't caught on, but enormous numbers of people are starting to. And... I really do hope that uh, that genuineness of spirit and that outside the box intellectual commitment serves you well as the world starts to appreciate that I think you're a very trustworthy voice. You don't get everything right, but the idea that we have somebody at your age who's embedded in your generation who can tell us something about what's happening is really valuable to me. And I do hope that you'll consider boosting that voice more than uh, just at the dinner table. I apologize for saying this four letter word, but do you love Zev? I was really worried it was gonna be another four letter <laughs> word. <laughs> There's so many to there choose from. Many. It, it doesn't even rise to the level of a question. I mean, I just, th there are a tiny number of people with whom you share so much life that you can't even think of yourself in their absence. And and uh, I don't know if Zev would find that, but it's, you can have a kid and never make this level of connection. I, I, th I think even right down to the fact that, you know, when, when Zev chooses Boogie Woogie Piano for his own set of reasons why I would choose Boogie Woogie Piano if I could play in any style, um, it's a it's a question about a decrease in loneliness. You know, like my grandfather played the mandolin, and I had to learn some mandolin because otherwise that instrument would go silent. You don't expect that you get a, this much of a chance to leave this much of yourself in another person who is choosing it and recreating it rather than it being directly instilled. And my proudest achievement is in a certain sense having not taught him and and have having shared this much so you know it, it's not even love it's like well beyond so you mentioned love for you making a less lonely world i think i speak for i would argue probably millions of people that you eric cuz this is a conversation with you have made for many people for me, a less lonely world. And I can't wait to see how you uh, develop as an intellect, but also I'm so heartworn by the optimism and the hopefulness that was in you that I hope develops further. And lastly, I'm deeply thankful that you, Eric, are my friend and would give me, would honor me with this watch. It uh, means more than words can say. Thanks guys, thanks for talking today. Thank you.